Hello and welcome back to The Broken Doll. Well, tonight I come to you with this wonderful doll called the Babs Harry H. Coleman doll. Now, you'll see here that I've milliputted the whole face. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you why. She's so pitted. And as I'm going over her, I tried spackling again. Spackling doesn't act like this when you put it on composition. And it just wasn't working. I don't know what was going on, but spackling would not work on this doll. So I thought, okay, fine. I'm going to just milliput your freaking face. <laughs> That's what I did. But here's the problem. Even when I put the milliput on her face, if I was touching one side to put pressure on the other side to spread out the milliput, my hand would lift off and the composition would come with the milliput right off into my hand. It was stuck to my hand, the milliput was. There's something wrong with the composition itself. This is a very damaged doll. I've never seen a doll so damaged in my life as like I've worked on a lot of damaged dolls, but I've never seen composition come right off with the Millie putt before. First time for me. I've had some pretty wet dolls before. I dried them out and everything. Let them have a few days and they dry right out. This one here, the composition is poor grade composition. Now, the thing is, this is 1919. I don't know when, like there was, here's the, the issue. There was two ways to make composition. There was a cold press and a hot press they used. Now, I don't know which one came first, but let's just say it was the cold press. One of them wasn't as good as the hot press as the opposite one. So if they were using cold press at the beginning and then went to hot press, then the hot press would be a better composition, which came a little later. Now, the thing is, it was starting to be introduced right around this time. They were switching over to a hot press, but it doesn't mean everybody was doing it. You know, just because some companies were doesn't mean all companies were. So this could be an old cold press one. That's just, we're using cold press. I think that's correct. They would just press it without heat. And, um, a lot of those dolls have a tendency, not all, but most of them have a tendency to really crumble and to fall apart because of the way they were put together. And then as they improved composition and how to use it and everything, it got better and better to where we see good, great Shirley Temple dolls. Ideal really mastered it. A lot of the, the horseman company and all of them, they mastered the, the, the composition really well. And but there are different grades to the to composition depending on the year that it was being produced. So if we're looking back to 1919, some places might have been still using the cold press and had not switched yet to the hot press. If or was it hot press first, cold? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I got it right. It was cold press first, then hot press. So um, this is what I'm saying. It may this could be a cold press composition doll which means not the highest grade of composition that's why you see a lot of those dolls from, from back in that time some of them are really pity especially when the paint you start um, working on them and this is I, i've worked on others that are kind of like this but not this bad um like i said if i was putting my hand over here on the composition actually i'll tell you what happened it was actually over here and i was pressing over this direction here and i had my hand over here when i lifted my hand off the 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 the, the uh milliput it came off with my hand it's not the milliput that has a problem it's the composition underneath it's falling apart so it kind of, it was like composition with milliput came with me so it's a composition underneath that's not secured so um is it a glue problem i don't know now that's why maybe this is something an afterthought that i thought about i didn't know this was the problem but if i had known when i started i would have put a a a, a layer of um mucilage glue over this first then worked on the doll you know, maybe it needed another layer of mucilage glue. And that could have helped the doll. That's why when I take apart a lot of dolls, I see mucilage glue down inside the head as well. And they do that to protect the composition from falling apart. Sometimes you'll even see it on the outside of the doll. And it's just a protection on top of the composition. And um, it works great. And you can paint over it, not a problem. You know, so... That, I got a feeling I'm getting on to something, what's happening here. I'm starting to understand the composition and the doll. This is the learning curve when it comes to working with composition and different types of composition. So if I was to do a doll like this again, and I could see that there was this problem, like if I, now that I know what it feels like in the hand and what it, how it reacts to um, 
sparkling. It turned my sparkling br like a, a gummy brown. It would not harden on the doll. That's telling me there's something else, a lot of moisture locked down in that doll. A layer of mucilage glue might have helped it. Um, you know, that's one one perspective, I'm, I, one way of looking at what's happening here. Other, you could come up with another scenario and it may be just as right, you know. But I think I'm on to something how this doll was made. Um, you know, so, it, or it's just a, uh, it, maybe it was, heat, I want to just switch it for a second here. It could be a heat press doll and it's just a poor grade one. That could be it too, you know. Um, a heat press was early, maybe not experienced, uh, the experience of it, not as, maybe some people didn't have it, like factories had it together as maybe others. Who knows, you know, we'll never know. All I can tell you what I do know is, is that this doll is in very poor condition for composition head. But I'm going to stay with her. I'm going to really help her out. I'm going to really start to uh, look like she's hardening up really nice. I can feel the difference in the, in the, um, Millie Putt already, it's hardening up really nice. So um, uh, some sanding tomorrow, or not tomorrow, maybe another day. I'll see what, what's going on tomorrow. And uh, maybe by tomorrow night, maybe I come come in here and start sanding a little bit. We'll see. And I'm just going to let her dry dry really good. Now, I didn't do any more up here because she's going to be wigged. You know, and that's why I'm not doing anything to the back of her head at all. Because she's going to be wigged. Um, but... Um, yeah, it's 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 sad what these dolls go through, and um, I might have to mix up a little bit more Millie Putt and go around in here. I just saw this now. Oh no, I did do there. Okay, yeah, that's all right. But um, yeah, um, yeah, I might just. Oh yeah, I see where I want to go. I might go around just a little bit more in in here, just to kind of you know go just to cover in. I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'm I don't have to have to you know. But anyhow, I thought I'd give you an update on her. And just where I am with her. So, and just some lessons on uh, your composition dolls when you're restoring them. Just the different things that you you see, what you learn along the way. Um, I worked on a horseman doll that um, was really wet. And, um, boy, if you could wring it out, probably the water would have come right out of her. But I just let her dry for, for weeks, weeks on end. She dried and she got really nice and dry and she was easy to work on. The composition was different. It was a different composition. Yeah, she was honeycombed in a lot of areas. Had to build a lot of her back head up um, with Millie putt and everything. Not a problem. Just built it up, built it up. So nice. And um, she turned out really quite nice. Um, I do want to strip her paint off of her and paint her in oil because I wasn't painting in oil at the time. I, was, I painted her in, in um, acrylic. So she, her paint will be coming off and I will be redoing her again. And um, I think I understand eyes a little bit better than what I did back then. Her eyes weren't the nicest, so I'm going to work on her eyes as well. So when I repaint her, I like to bring her in coming up. That, well, I've got a few doll, quite a few dolls ahead of her. But I would like to take her and just strip her down and take off her acrylic paint and just go right at her again with some uh, oil paint. And um, I think she will look a lot better. I don't like acrylic on these dolls. Um, they just, it, it's just not a nice paint for these dolls. For plastics, yes, but not for this. But anyways, that being said, I thought I'd just give you a quick up, update. Just things I'm noticing on her and, um, yeah, just on her composition. So that was interesting to see that and to have it come off right in my hand. I, I looked at the, the Millie putt was hooked to my hand and on the other side was composition. So the composition is coming right off the doll. So, yeah, let this stuff dry. Um, it needs it. It needs composition on top. Uh, it needs Milliput on top just to keep it. Uh, like, I noticed the difference down on, on the chest plate here. As soon as I put this on the chest plate, it became firmer. It became the type of doll I want it to become. So I know when I put this on the face itself, it's going to become the doll that I want it to become. And, um, yeah, so this is what we're going to have to do with her. But I love it so far. I think she's going to look just wonderful when she's done. But anyways, thanks for joining me and um, listening to the ups and downs of restoring an, an old 1919 doll. So, yes. So anyways, thanks for joining me and more to come. Bye-bye.